Hi, my name is Willix, and this is Frostpunk, a new, a reasonably new game from the people that developed this War of Mine. This War of Mine was a really good game for the little game that it was. I quite enjoyed it. This one is an absolute blast. I highly recommend it. Now, when I first started playing it, I went out looking for what's the best build order for a beginner on normal mode. And I couldn't find anything that I was impressed with. And I looked pretty damn hard. I watched a whole pile of YouTube videos and looked on all the websites and tried to piece all the pieces together and figured out what you should be doing first and why and all the rest of that. I couldn't find anything worthwhile. So I've done my own research here. I've tried this uh, the first five days of it over and over again, about like at least half a dozen times, maybe more than that actually. And trying to figure out what is the best build order. And I've come up with something I think you're going to like. Now, I'm not saying that I know more about this game than everybody else out there. I definitely don't. I'm not saying that there aren't other people that uh, do good videos out there. There definitely are. I'm saying that I couldn't find anybody with a good build order. And that's what I'm trying to do for you. First things first. The big mistake I saw a lot of people make is they didn't open the bo Book of Laws right away and assign one immediately. It's on a timer. You want to get it started right away. You don't want to have it wait till the game says, hey, you didn't do this. You should be doing this. As far as I'm concerned, there's two good ways to start this off, both of them with their own advantages and disadvantages. One is child labor. The other is emergency shift. Now, I'm going to pick emergency shift, so let's talk about child labor first, and then we'll talk about the other side. Child labor... You start off with uh, 15 children out of the 80 people that you've got. And if you pick child labor, you can put them to work right away. So this is dramatically increasing the size of your workforce. Now they can only work on safe jobs, gathering stuff, or work in the cookhouse. But there's definitely jobs like that, so that's not a problem. And even later on, you can uh, ha get child labor all jobs, so they can work as engineers, which workers can't. See, for uh, medical huts or for the um, research, you've got to use engineers to do those. You can't just use regular laborers. But if uh, it's child labor all jobs, they can do those jobs. But there's an either or choice here. The other choice is child shelters. Now the shelter itself will raise hope. It, what, the, what it is is a building that works as a daycare, school, playground, all mixed into one. What I'm really interested though is the next step after that. Medical apprentices or engineering apprentices. And from what I've read, somebody that seemed to have researched it, is that it's about a 30% increase in either your research or a 30% increase in your medical. Now, if my first logical thought was, well, research is critical on this game, that'd be the way to go, right? But for the people that know more about this game than I do, and have played through it all the way, this game is gonna go to hell towards the end. Even if you play great, it's still gonna go to hell at the end. And if you play poorly, it's gonna go to hell really, really fast. So, Having 30% extra in medical when, it, when things do go south is definitely worthwhile and probably more important than the engineering apprentices, which are very good too, but medical does better. But I don't need these immediately, so I'm not going to sign that. I'm going to go over to emergency shift. What that does is you can put people... Every, every couple of days you can put people on a 24-hour shift and so they normally work a 10-hour shift so it's a dramatic improvement in productivity however you're probably going to kill somebody now it's random it doesn't mean for sure that you're going to kill somebody but every single time I tried it in my test I killed somebody putting them on emergency shift so I'm not willing to kill somebody no thanks what I am interested in is the extended... Um, actually, I wouldn't care so much on emergency shift later on in the game when I got lots of people. So I might use it later when, if I really, really need it for some reason. But I've designed a good enough starting point here, bringing enough research fast enough that I don't need to put my engineers on, 
my researchers on 24-hour shift or something. What I'm really looking for, though, is the extended shifts up here. Instead of working a 10-hour day, they work a 14-hour day. So a 40% increase in productivity, is that's sizable. And you don't kill anybody doing it. It does increase some dissatisfaction, but it doesn't do anything else really, really bad. So that's where I'm aiming. I'm trying to get there as quick as I can. All right, a new law has so passed. next up, let's build some stuff. Now, a lot of people swear by putting up a, a gathering hut right away. Now, I've done some research out there, and somebody that said he did the uh, actual testing claimed that it increased the productivity by double. That 10 people in a gathering hut gather as fast as 20 people out in the snow gathering stuff. And it also has the added benefit of keeping people warm and they don't get sick as much. So, the problem with building a gathering hut right now though, is you've got to build a road out to it and then the gathering hut, and it takes time to build the gathering hut. And that's gonna offset a lot of the savings you would have had in productivity. So, instead, what I'm gonna do is research is king in this game. I'm going to build a workshop immediately. And as a matter of fact, I have enough materials up there, because it takes 15 wood and 5 steel, to build a second one. Now, the second one's a little more questionable. The first one, no-brainer. Even if you want to build a gathering hut, build one of these right away. Oh, well, notice that I didn't put them on the first row here with the heat. I'm saving that for other things. I put them out a little further. These ones actually uh, have some insulation of their own, the, a heat factor of 2. So they're much better handling the cold. But this is as far as I can reach out without building more rope. The first one, you get 100% research out of it. The second one, you get a 30% increase. So a total of 130. If you were to build a third one, you'd get a 20% increase. And if you were to build a fourth one, it's a 10% increase. And everyone after the fourth one is another 10% increase. So definitely diminishing returns. But even at 30%, that's better than anything else I think I can do right now. So that's how I'm doing it. Now let's place some people. I'm going to need five engineers there, five engineers there. So I'm going to take fi the five engineers that are left, and I'm going to put them on the steel over here. Now that leaves me with 50 workers, and I'm going to put them on wood. So dividing that up means I can do 13, 13, 12, and 12. If I'm trying to do them evenly. Okay, so all of them are assigned. So now what I'm going to do is we've got three different speeds. Very fast, fast, and normal. I'm going to go very fast until this gets almost built, and I'm going to slow it down so I can catch it right on the button when it finishes. Whoops. I should have stopped. Oh, well. So I missed a second or two there. I didn't do it as well as I normally do. Figures. That's the way it happens on camera, of course, right? Yes, we're going to need heat, but we don't need it this turn. I'm not even going to gathering coal, so no use p investing in heat this turn. A lot of people go with the beacon right away. And it is a good choice, but I'm not going to have the materials to build the beacon on the first night. So I'm going to build it on the second night. So I'm going to research it after I do something else. food and shelter. There's hunter's gear. Well, we haven't built any hunter's huts, so that's not critical right now. Sawmill's not a bad choice at all, but I'm, again, I'm going to probably build that right after I build my beacon, because I'm not going to have my materials and stuff together in time. I'm going to go with faster gathering. That's a 15% increase in gathering speed. Now, a lot of people leave this one to much later in the game. They do eventually get it because they want to go further down the chain. But I think if I'm going to take it, I want to take it right from the get-go and get that extra 15% gathering speed right away. I'll get it on my first day. So that's where I'm going. 
put the other five in there and then we'll triple speed it what we're watching is this one here for time the game's going to stop us in the meantime anyways you can read that on your own if you want getting close now we'll go single speed Okay, and that time I caught it pretty much right on the mark. So from here on in, I'm gathering at 15% faster. So now let's go for our beacon. Whether we do the beacon or the uh, sawmill makes no difference. They're both going to be ready for tomorrow night. All right, anything else I need to pay attention to? Okay, we're getting close to 1800. I want to stop it on 1800. Oops, double speed bit, there we go. Now we'll take off the last 15 seconds. Okay. Work day ends, it's time off. Now that they're all finished their work for the day, we can start them building stuff. So let's start on some buildings here. First thing I wanna build is a medical tent. Put it there. Then I'm going to build eight tents. Uh, ten each. I've got 80 people. This yes, will house everybody. See, on the first night, I either have to start this up and let people sleep in the streets, or I build tents for all of them. Either case will keep them warm enough. So that part's done. Now, I talked about some gathering huts, and we have a little bit left, but uh, not a lot. So let's build some gathering huts here. Now see how it's green there, and now it's white. This part here, here see how it's green, then it's white. So we want to catch it maybe as close in as we can here, and still catch all of them is green. Okay, so I guess it worked out. Doesn't really matter because it's a temporary building. It's going to come down in a night or two. That's a straight line out like that, so we'll put it there. Now, next one, and see how, whoops, Stop that. Street is under construction, so I know I've joined it up correctly. Let's try doing it the other way around. We'll place the street first. We'll pull this out on that line nine. And then we'll drop down a gathering hut here. Street is under construction again. And do we have enough for another one? No, I don't think we do, do we? that's it for what we can build tonight and I want my engineers back right now and we're gonna wait till this uh, spins around and then we'll put the engineers in the medical center anything about the click off nope provide shelter for everybody. Well, I'm already making tents for everybody, so of course I'm going to pick that one. Okay. I'll put a five engineers in there for now. You only need as many engineers as you have sick people. But there's no reason not to have it full at night if the alternative is gathering or something that involves work. Let's finish off all the building part. Let's see, I cleaned out all my discontent. This is seven. 
this at seven. This at eight. It's this one here. You at eight. Actually, I'll reduce you by one. Yes, we'll do seven, seven, seven on those. And how are we doing steel? This one is at 60. That one is at 48. So on the steel over here, what do we have 22? Oh, I know why we got 22 left. Max in there. Max in there. And steel over here will give it the two extra workers. And if in the morning I still have extra, I'll put another two on here of the engineers. Just about to tick this off, so let's just wait. There we go. So now we can go extended shift. Now Hear note me. that the it's different New between the laws and engineering. Laws, when you select the law, you automatically get the law. And then there's a delay before you can pick another one. Whereas, when you're doing research, you select what you want, you've got to wait till it finishes researching it, then you get to use it. So we can use extended shifts right now. So we're going to put things on extended shifts. You're going to get an extended shift. Well, each of these things is going to get an extended shift. Extended shift there. And all right. Yeah, notice the, those horns don't mean anything anymore to me because everybody's on extended shift. This is what I've got to watch right now. Slow speed. Got our beacon done. Next one up is going to be our sawmill. Because we're going to run out of wood. As you can see, there's very little wood left on this map right now. Whoops. Not the person. I want the wood pile. Wood crates. There's like 50 there, 50, 50, 50. So there's not that much left. Uh, actually, no, there's still a fair bit left. We're going to have almost 300 when we're done. We can do a triple speed. Okay, but it's only 1,400. We got another six hours. Another five something. Oops. Sawmill researched. I wasn't watching that one. I wonder if it ticked off at all. Oh well. Heat. Steam hub. Start. All right. This thing's about to hit, and that thing's about to hit uh, 20. Another wood crate. Yeah, two more wood crates just popped off. And what time is it? 18.39. Two things about to happen. It's both this and this are about to take off. Wood crates depleted. choose 
there's a couple of good choices here. I'm going to go with Child Shelters, but Soup would have been a good choice as well. The advantage of Soup is it doubles the amount of food when you cook. And the problem, the drawback, is that it causes a lot of dissatisfaction. Not a little dissatisfaction, a lot of dissatisfaction when people eat the soup. But another good benefit of soup, and you probably want to take it regardless sometime, and that is you can double feed the sick, feed them double rations, and they get, get them out of the medical centers faster. But for that aspect of it, I think I'm better to go with uh, child shelters and then medical apprentices. That will e work even better. But we'll see. I think I'm going to be able to bring in enough food. All right, because I'm doing pretty well here. Next up, let's build some stuff. Now, for I'm going to go with two sawmills. So first off, to place them, I find it easier if I just use some spacers to figure out where I want to place it. That's just a temporary building. And then resources, sawmill, place it right there. So those corners there line up. Now we can get rid of this. And before I forget, we can draw a street over to it. Now we need to draw, make another one of those. We'll make it over here. I'm just trying to get it close to the roads for this one. Wherever that... I can get as many trees as I can. I think that gets the most trees there, right there. Right, and we need to build another road up to there. Next up, let's go build our beacon. First, and I want it way up against this wall because if I try to place the beacon down here somewhere, that balloon gets in my way and annoys the hell out of me. So I like to hide it way up here, where it's out of my way. And it doesn't need heat, so it can be up against the wall where it's cold. Now, inconveniently, this isn't coming out the way I would have really liked, but we can get there. Now, next up, we want to build a couple of hunter's huts. I'm going to have to start gathering the food sometime. Again, for this. See, it would have been so much easier to just run that straight through there, but the coal's in my way. All right, hunter's huts done. I'm going to need a couple of gathering posts for coal. Put one up here, that catches those two. And I'll place another one down here. And I want it to be as far in that direction as I can. So... And still catch both those things. So we'll put it right there. Now, for a road... Run it over like that. Oh, a cookhouse. That's right. Food. Cookhouse. That would be one house, two houses, and one more. Put the cookhouse right there. Why I placed it there, you'll see uh, next night. And that should be all of that. We can start fast forwarding now. Oh, right. I shouldn't have done it that fast. Oh, I only want a couple... Two minutes anyway, so that's fine. Yes, I know the heat's off. I'm gathering coal for you. But tonight, I'm going to make you happy.
Okay, we're getting around to the time. I better start prepping where people go. Because shifts are going to start and I won't have people assigned properly. Now, we really want to start grabbing some coal. No question about that. Oh, and we need to upgrade our shifts for those. Oh, and we're going to need to upgrade our shifts for these. And I'm going to want to put at least two people in here. And I can take some out of these. They definitely don't need that much. The 22 left. Let's at least five out for now, and five out of there. Actually, this didn't have need that. Take the extra two from there as well. So that leaves us with 24 there. Oh, I'm still going to be short five. Ah, damn it. Well, for now, I won't put any in there. For now, I'll lower you a little bit. Oh, because I need five to spare. Oh, so, we'll pick that. Three. Uh, two. That's for the scouts. We need five spares for the scouts. There we go. Beacon built. That's a neat cutscene, but I'm taking too long in this episode anyways. We're going to go to the Lost Expedition. Oh, we can't go there yet. We have to come back here. Build it. Now we can go. Oh, we gotta click the little green button there. All right, these two things are being built. We have no spare people. Everybody's on long shifts, and shifts have started. That's a pain in the butt. Oh well. We'll see if they get built or not. They're still building. Everybody's working too, so that's kind of odd. Uh, we do need to start cooking some food. Where am I stealing people from? One of these two. Seven there. Ten there. researched. Next up, resources, do steelworks. What did I just hear? Oh, this guy. Took off. Medical premises like we talked about before. New Anything else I have to pay attention to? No, I don't think so. Scouts have arrived. Okay. So we could either es escort them back. There's 36 of them. So that's uh, four children, 10 engineers, and 22 workers. Or we can take the chance on one or two of them dying and send them back on their own which is what I'm going to do. And then we're going to go off to the sturdy shelter. So far, so 
good. Are any of these short and not going to get done in time? I don't trust it with only one, so I'm going to actually take one out of there. Put it back in here. Night is coming. Put down your tools. Uh, they're all on long shifts. But I really should start uh, placing things anyways. Well, finish off the tech. I'm not going to use a coal thumper. I'm going to go for a coal mine. So what do we... Actually, hold on a sec. We have lots of wood. Okay, I know what I'm going to do. The one I really want is to do the uh, drawing boards. Uh, it just gets us up to our next level. So now we have to deal with the incoming cold. And I have lots of coal. So we're going to turn this guy on now. So that's time to warm up before tomorrow morning. Next up, we need to prepare for all those incoming people. And I'm going to do something kind of interesting for homes. See, normally when you place a home, a tent or whatever, it would go there, then there, then there. Now notice it's not lining up at all with this line here. It's way over here. We can get it to fit in there. We can force it to fit. It's kind of interesting the way this happens. I didn't invent this. I saw it online. So let's say we always wanted them to come out every two houses on the spokes. We can force the houses to fit inside. So, you pl pull it back one, place it there, place it there. See, normally a house would fit just right in there. But if we push it forward, it actually squeezes it and makes it fit. So now we're got fitting out to these roads here. So next up, we're going to... Actually, I'm going to build a med center right there. This row is going to be non-tense because I'm going to be putting a um, arena or something over here and it's going to cover all of the homes. Now, the next row when we go to build house tents is going to be a little different. See, the second row and the fourth row work differently than the third. So watch what happens. If I place one there and one there, it doesn't work. But again, we can play around with roads and make it work. We ha even though we're putting another one back there again, we have to delete it for now until we place the road. Ooh. Deliberately because I'm doing something funky, this is just to this setup that I've got, I'm going to place one here that forces the road to be a little bit off from where it normally would be. Let me show you what I mean. See, normally a road would come out straight like that, but it's trying to line up with this instead of line up with that. So now when I pull it out two and I drop down, hold on, let's also run this over here. Now what I'm trying to do is when I drop down a beak, not a beacon, this thing, it heats that. Because if it had been slightly over here, it wouldn't have lit this up and wouldn't have got the cookhouse. So I forced it to fit. Now we can go ahead and place that and force it down and in and it fits. We can do the same thing over on the other side here. Force it down and it fits. So that's our four houses. I'm going to build a uh, child shelter there at fit quite nicely, but I'm going to do it after the first night because I'm not going to get everything built on the first night. What are you... Oh, you're just a tent that doesn't belong. Okay. What else did I have to build? I know what else I have to build. I need to build a... Steelworks. Put it right there. 
for some reason, I have to be very careful when I place this road, I'm making sure that I'm absolutely on that line, because sometimes I get this road does not connect to the main thing, and I can't seem to fix it, so... I don't know what causes it. If you know what causes that, let me know, because I seem to get a tiny little gap in here or something. And I don't, I can't put a road down later to fill in the gap, and I don't know what causes it to happen. Okay, so that's the, oh, and while we're over here, let's build another gathering post there. Not that I need it right away, but I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Now, just so that I can check to make sure... I'm going to be building one of these here eventually, but I'm not going to do it right now. I'm just using that to check on locations. I'm going to build a road like this at 5. I'm going to place down a beacon. And yes, the beacon is... not beacon, sorry, the steam hub is catching this. Get rid of that for just now. I want to make sure this is built out there. Because that cold is incoming. You can see it here. What am I forgetting, if anything? Okay, we want to get started on building right away. So, because these things are on long shifts, let's take some people out of them. We definitely don't need them in these things. Up 34 people. Food? Yeah, you can stay in there actually. We can. Okay, next one. Oh, it's 1800. That's actually said. I know, I'm shorting myself people, but I need some food. Well, like I said, I'm not taking them out of here. So, I think that's building everything. Oh, did I... T this is the third night. Did I turn this on? Yes, I did. Oh, this one is to be set to only be on during the workday. Resources. Oops. Resource wise. Wood. Let's put them up. And cold snaps about to hit. Scouts got to where they're going. Take the resources. There is 98 food rations. I could really use that food because I haven't been doing very well on getting food so far. So let's actually take that home. I'm not as worried about running home once or twice while I'm doing this because I don't want to hit winter home until around the 14th or 15th day because otherwise that kicks off to events that I don't want to have happen yet. So I think I've got enough time for one scout, because I got it out very early, 
to do quite well on cl cleaning up most of the stuff before that day. And we have the option on a second scout as well. All right. Let's make it get cold. Brace yourselves. Cold is coming. Okay, since the cold is coming, let's take a look at the heat map here. And we're going to need to warm that up, warm that up. These will only uh, use fuel if there's somebody in them. And I am going to warm up you as well for sick people. Good. And the other thing we're going to do is we're going to stick this into overdrive. So now we got a lot of other people to deal with. But we definitely want to put some people in there. It's the work day. So for construction, we're going to build tech. And child children. And because I'm going to be using the hunt huts the way I am now. I'm going to uh, not be doing as much building during the evenings. Because the way it works is you can actually sort of do it as 24 hours. These guys work from 1800 to 6. So if you stick them in there at 1800 and you pull them out and make them do work once they get back and then put them in again at 1800 each time. So... to do. Okay, this is about to tick off. That's why I stopped it. They're still building their stuff. Drying board's done. Now, I actually didn't need to do drying boards right away because when I really think of this what I'm doing for, uh, what I wanted to do was make a wall drill and a coal mine. But I'm actually doing okay on both my, because I got two of the uh, sawmills, doing okay on wood right now. And I'm doing okay on coal mining. I think I want to build them when the temperature drops back to uh, 30 in a couple of days. So I don't have to have people working in the cold. So in the meantime, I'm actually going to do, I should have done this last turn instead. Hunter's gear. We could do that or we could, no, actually, I'm going to do something different. I changed my mind. You can change your mind. Abort that. I'm going to do bunkhouses because I got a lot of wood incoming and that means I can use that wood to do stuff. We're doing a cold snap so it's probably a good time to uh, work inside on houses. We got 17 hungry and 11 food. That's bad. Cookhouse has got five people in it. Continue. This is done. So, did I have? Yeah, I've got engineers. Max that out. Sick people. Only two sick people. 
Oh, well, there's five up there. Well, that's five homeless, not six people. There's homes for you. Go find your homes. free people. Let's make them do something somewhere. Actually, let's get these finished off. Four sick. Great. Well, how's it four sick and there's only two in here? So, my engineers got hit up there. Because we don't need this yet. I guess maybe that's because of those children working. I don't know. Those children apprentices. Oh, I can even have more people working. Yeah, we got three hours. These guys are back. in the only place I got left. Two there. You've only got two. You got one. That no, doesn't matter. They're all doing their thing. So we'll just leave them be for now. Cookhouse is done. All right. And this is about to tick off. Plant base researched. Next thing, two things we'll do will be the uh, wall drill and the uh, coal mine. All right, We've got seven people free right now. Coming around. Right, so we got a whole bunch of wood just came in. So we're going to fill up on wood really soon. But we do need... No, we don't need to cook. That was rations, not uh, raw food. You go up to the steel bridge. And let's take this off to 1800. Or just before it. Get close enough. I am going to pull off of... Sawmill, that sawmill. Oh, and you're done. Okay, we've got enough. Max it out there. Max it out there. And we've got one spare person. Don't have to worry about six people. I guess we can stick one in a lorry. And that makes 
waiting on. Alright, I think that's going to be it for this episode. I hope you learned something on it. Let me know what you think of my build over, whether you think it was any good or not. If you've got any suggestions or improvements, please put them in the comments. I do pay attention to them and I will uh, take a look at it. Let me know whether you'd like me to, s to see me continue with Frostpunk, if you think it's uh, something that would interest you. Whether I should continue in normal mode here, whether I should switch to hard mode like most of the other people have done. Should I uh, focus on particular areas that are people having trouble with? If there's not a lot of interest in Frostpunk, I will probably move back on to other games like Minecraft and do that again. But I am having a lot of fun with this. I wouldn't mind spending a little bit more time on Frostpunk before I go back to Minecraft. So let me know what you think. I appreciate your uh, compliments or advice or whatever you give. Go out there and have some fun. Thanks.